We know what America first means. What, what do you mean with Asia first kind of taking over? Well, Asia first has actually been happening since the end of the Cold War 30 years ago. It's since that time that with the energy super cycle and the Persian Gulf energy flows from West Asia to East Asia and everything through their intra-regional trade integration, so Asians today trade more with each other than they do with the rest of the world. That was true before the financial crisis, by the way, which actually helps to explain the resilience of Asian economies to the demand shock. And since that time, it's only accelerated further with new trade agreements. And on top of that, you have Belt and Road coming in. So all of these factors over the last 30 years have made Asia pretty well integrated. And that has huge consequences for the trade war because we've underestimated the extent to which Asians can substitute our exports to them. It's, it's interesting because that kind of makes it seem like even if we have this fight with China, that the other Asian countries are, are going to be helping it. But what I've heard from other people, though, is that the other Asian countries, India, the ASEAN nations, are actually taking advantage of our battles with China right now, that they're going to be doing more trading directly with us or taking more of our, the factories that used to be going to China. What, what, how do you see it? You are absolutely right. And that trend, again, began just on the basis of labor wage arbitrage uh, years ago. It's been five years since ASEAN, the Southeast Asian countries, have been receiving more FDI than China itself because their wages are lower. 2018, India exceeded China's uh, inbound FDI as well. So the, definitely the new factory floor of the world is shifting towards South and Southeast Asia. You've got 2.5 billion people in just those countries. Again, a billion more people than China, younger median age, and of course, you know, more open, liberal political economies, easier to do business, right. less likelihood of you're getting squeezed out, obviously, as China moves up the value chain. And this is why we as, you know, corporate America need to look a lot more closely all of these markets, we've had so many eggs in just the China basket, it's time to spread out a bit more. Is there a way to kind of circumvent China in all of this and kind of isolate China? Is that, I mean, we, we had a trade agreement that didn't go through that we didn't go right. forward with. Maybe that was a mistake, but yeah. is there a way to kind of make that happen anyway? You know, we do like to think about foreign policy and economic strategy as for, forcing countries to take sides, whether we're talking about trade agreements or whether we're talking about 5G and technology and AI. That's not the way these Asians see it. They say, let's Let's have the best of both worlds. Let's participate in the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement, but if the U.S. doesn't join, we'll do it anyway. Let's now do the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership with Asians, with China, and we're going to join that. So the smart countries play all sides. You will not get other Asian countries to pick sides. The Cold War is over. Well, can we just talk about picking sides? So 10 years yeah. from now, the cross currents in Asia right now, who, who's allies and who's not? Is everybody friends? Frenemies, yes. For everybody's frenemies. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, but who's going to be closer and who's not? So they practice what I call multi-alignment, right? They want to have good relations with China, with Russia, with right. Europe. Let's not forget that a trade war is more than two players. And as you rightly said, other countries will win even as parts of American, the American industrial sector and export sectors will lose, parts of China will lose, but that business is going into ASEAN, it's going into India, and Europe is gonna be a winner from this because Europe wants to have free trade agreements now with Japan, with ASEAN, with India, and also agrees with us that China needs to open, right? And already today, the trade volumes between Europe and Asia are $500 billion more per year than their trade with us. Let me ask you this. You said during the financial crisis, because there was so much trading already taking place between yeah, all these Asian nations, right. they were more isolated and, and more protected from the things that were happening in Europe and the United States. Does that mean we're more protected right now with the weakness that we're seeing in the Chinese economy that maybe it's not going to wash up on our shores like it used to? Maybe the globe is more divided than it used to be? It's actually a really, really deep and interesting point. The United States, in particular, and North America in general, General is the most autarkic and self-sufficient region of the world economy. We only represent 14% of world trade. So while that's geopolitically wonderful to be protected in a way as we are, geoeconomically it means that we actually have less leverage on others because we're only 14% of world trade. Europe is 38%, Asia is 36%, right? So they are dependent on each other. And if we are creating, you know, sort of politically motivated or even justified export controls and limitations on how much we will trade with them and how much they'll export to us, they're just going to substitute us by trading more with each other. And again, that's exactly what is happening. It's been happening for years. We're just not paying attention to it because we think that we're the center of the trading world and we're not because actually we're less vulnerable than others are. Very quickly, what do you think happens with these trade talks come March 2nd? Um, you know, the signaling is already priced into the equation. There'll be some kind of face-saving compromise around China, you know, allowing more goods to come in, whether it's commodities, industrials, and so forth, probably, you know, doing a little bit less forced technology transfer. But the train has left the station on their industrial policy and their 
quest for self-sufficiency, and they're going to get it either internally or by just trading more with other high-tech partners like Japan and South Korea and Taiwan, who will provide them the semiconductors and other goods that we are less likely so to So tariffs now. go up on March 2nd or no? Um, probably not. Okay. Probably not.